Now Pat, his wife Harriet and their son Jim, they lived in a wonderful little house on a lovely patch of land. And there wasn't a thing wrong with their home. There was absolutely nothing in the locality to cause them the slightest shred of discomfort. It was idyllic. But of course, you already know that that is a lie. There was one problem with their home. Upon their land, there was a small hill. And upon this hill grew a hawthorn tree. And every single night, a troop of fairies would come and dance around that hawthorn, singing and shouting and playing music right up until the dawn. So the family, they got hardly any sleep. They couldn't with all that noise and cavorting and shouting going on just behind the house. A Pat and Harriet, they often entertained the idea of chopping down that hawthorn tree, digging it up by the roots, and burning the lot. And after enduring sleepless nights for two or three years, that's exactly what Pat did. He took his axe and he chopped down that tree. He took his shovel and he dug up the roots. He piled them all up and he burned them to ashes. And for a year or so after that, well, everything was fine. The family was able to sleep at last and had good, long, restful sleeps every single night. Until one day, a year or two later, Pat, his son Jim, and the neighbor's son, they all went out walking. And just as they were passing by the hill where the hawthorn used to stand. Pat said, hold on, hold on, I'm just going to stop and fill up my pipe. So he stops to fill up his pipe, the two boys keep walking on. But after a while, Jim thinks to himself, hold on, where's my father? Himself and the other boy, they turn around, there's no sign of Pat. So they go back to the hill to see if he's still there. And when they reach the hill, they hear Pat's voice somewhere in the distance calling out for help. So the two of them, they run after Pat's voice, desperately searching for him, wondering what the hell has happened to him. And they keep searching and running and just looking everywhere they can until they find him laying in an old graveyard looking battered and bruised and exhausted. And he says to them, I, I just stopped by the hill to fill up my pipe. And this troop of fairies had charged out of nowhere and started battering me and dragging me and pushing me along. And they wouldn't let me go and they wouldn't leave me alone until we got here. I don't know what to do. So Jim and the other boy, they helped Pat get back to the house. He laid him in bed. He slept through the night. But after that, there was a change in Pat. He became sullen and withdrawn. He became fearful and jittery. He took to going for long walks. He'd be gone for hours and hours at a time. And as time wore on, those lo And as time wore on, those walks became longer and longer. Soon he was gone for days at a time. And the days turned to weeks. The weeks turned to months. And eventually one day, Pat set out on a walk was never seen again. But three years later, his son Jim, much older now, was walking home from a fair when an old woman came up to him and she said, 
Well, it's about time now that you went and found your father, isn't it, Jim? Jim didn't know what to think of this. What, what are you saying to me? Oh, well, he's he served out his sentence at this point for that cruelty he inflicted on us in cutting down our tree. Now remember this son, Jim. You'll find them. Five old oak trees upon a hill stand just above a busy mill. A big white house standing by cannot fail to catch your eye. Cross the bridge, the mill race o'er, till you reach the mill house door. Go inside, and when you see the man you seek, you'll think of me. And finishing her song, the old woman disappeared, like smoke on the breeze. And Jim, he finished his journey home, wondering what all of this was about. The next morning, he set off on the journey. He walked past the hill from the house, and he kept going until he saw five oak trees on the top of another hill. So he keeps going, he approaches the trees, and as he gets closer, he can see that there's a mill. So he approaches, he sees the large white house. He crosses over the bridge or the mill race, and he went in through the door of the mill house, and he looked inside. And the room, it was, it was very clean. It looked freshly painted. There was a table and a bench and a lovely dresser, and a big sack of flour in one corner, but the sack of flour appeared to be snoring. As he approached, he found a man asleep inside. The man looked to be in his sixties. He had long bedraggled beard and long bedraggled hair. He was covered in flour. But Jim still recognised his father. He shook him awake and dragged him from the sack of flour. And Pat, as he stumbled and blundered into consciousness, blinking in the light. Son, son, you found me. Oh, we never should have touched that Hawthorne. We never should have touched it. Oh, what did I do? Jim helped his father home. And as they were walking, as they were passing by the hill on the way back to the house, he saw someone had planted a new hawthorn tree. And they resolved to never, ever touch it.